Hey everyone. Oh my goodness, so many people joining. Hey guys. That was the fastest I've ever seen 60 people join a webinar and the numbers are growing. Hey everyone, thanks so much for coming. Let us know in the chat where you are joining from. I see some reseller friends, uh, tons of vendor users from our Facebook group. Welcome. And we'll get started just in one minute. Maryland, Florida, Fort Lauderdale. Oh my goodness. Mark, where are you joining from? I'm in Utah. Utah, nice. Oh, I see Massachusetts in the house. That's me as well. All right, we're gonna give people um, just one more minute to trickle in and then we're going to get started with inventory management and tax prep for resellers. Let me share my screen here. And we'll make sure we can see the slide deck here. And we've got this deck on the screen, right, everyone? I'm always so paranoid when I'm screen sharing that it's not officially showing everyone the slideshow. <laughs> All right, so welcome everyone to Vendu's Reseller Tax and Inventory Management Workshop. I'm super excited to be here today with Not Your Dad's CPA, Mark, and I'm going to let him do the honor and introduce himself. Yeah, thanks, Mark, too. I'm a CPA and I specialize in helping resellers specifically with taxes and accounting, and that's pretty what I've been doing for the past few years, so happy to be here. We're so happy to have you. Um, we recently launched a reseller tax guide um, with Mark, and it's such a pleasure to read all of that information and feel such a need for resellers because this area can be really difficult to navigate. Um, so welcome everyone again to our Vendu webinar. Um, we host webinars and workshops all the time with different reseller tools, with different reseller companies and marketplaces um, to help Vendu be your best friend and a resource for trustworthy and usable information. So as a quick agenda to what we will talk about tonight, we're going to talk about Vendu and how it can help you with tax preparation and bookkeeping. So specifically, we're going to show you how the Vendu form can help, Vendu's inventory management compatibility, custom labels on Vendu, CSV spreadsheets, our profit and revenue calculator, um, and Mark will teach us all along the way. And at the end, um, we're going to talk about some reseller tax tips some tax prep. Mark's going to share some common tax myths, and we will have a Q&A, so stay tuned for that. And let's start. Let me reshare my screen here with Vendu. So how many people, tell me in the chat, are listing directly from Vendu rather than importing your listings? Tell me in the chat. Awesome. I see tons of people. Allison is. So when you list from Vendu or even when you import, there is some fields right on the Vendu form that are going to help you stay organized with your inventory. So an example of that is when we open the Vendu listing you'll see that the Vendu form not only has the information that you need in order to list the item, but if we scroll to the bottom, we also see some fields for you, for your inventory management and for your tax preparation. Those include your cost of goods fields. Of course, that's an important tax number. And they also include any custom labels you've assigned to your item and any notes. When I show you how to download inventory spreadsheets, you'll see that all of these fields are downloaded in that spreadsheet that can be used for your tax prep and inventory management. So in addition to those at the bottom, we also have SKU, we have quantity, we have the date of acquisition. All of these features on the Vendu form will help you for bookkeeping, practical purposes, 
inventory management, and tax prep. So if you start your listings in Bendu, I suggest making these part of your listing flow. If you import, you can always add them after importing in order to have Bendu as your one organized, synchronized bookkeeping and tax preparation hub. Um, so I never encourage skipping these fields. They're super important. Mark, can you explain the importance of any of these fields, um, especially the dates and the numbers for from the tax preparation standpoint? Yeah, I mean, the the, the cost of goods sold if you, field is huge. I mean, that's such that that makes keeping track of your your inventory so much easier from an accounting standpoint. I mean, that's that's the hardest thing in in bookkeeping as a reseller when you're dealing with inventory is knowing what your cost of goods sold is because you're going to run into that on your tax form. And the, most time people have no idea um, unless you're tracking it in a spreadsheet, which is sort of an extra step. But if but having it here really kind of integrates it into a more um, streamlined process. Absolutely. And we'll talk about how we can download the spreadsheets right from Mendu, um, allowing you in many ways to skip that step as far as your inventory is concerned anyways. Um, so let's talk about inventory management with Vendu. And there are so many facets to inventory management. There is, of course, the tax prep and the bookkeeping. There's also the practical purposes, right? We're resellers. We're selling on multiple marketplaces. We need a hub. Like, we need a system. That tells us what we have, where it's listed, where we can find it physically. And then, of course, all of those numbers and dates for bookkeeping and tax preparation. And Vendu really is the solution to this problem for resellers. Um, prior to Vendu, I kept spreadsheets that I spent so many hours in <laughs> every week. And for some reason, they were still never accurate. And I've tried many different softwares. But what's beautiful about this one is that it's made for this. It's made for the reseller, especially the multi-platform reseller. So here's an overview of inventory management with Vendu. When we're in this main screen here, you see your listings divided by status. So drafted, of course, unlisted. And what I recommend is, as you'll see, this is my entire death pile drafted. The second that I get home from sourcing, rather than entering things in a spreadsheet like I used to, I enter them right into Vendu. When I quickly use a listing template that I've created for myself, and I add that on today, I source some Levi's 501 jeans, and I enter my cost of goods, that is my new equivalent of entering information into a spreadsheet. Because again, I'm going to show you how to download a spreadsheet, but what I just did was skipped the step. This item is now in my inventory with a basic title, a date of acquisition, a cost of goods, and because I used a listing template, the category is there too. I skipped the spreadsheet step like Mark was talking about entirely, and now this information is in Vendu, and honestly, drafting it at some point was inevitable anyways, right? So I just skipped the step. You'll see my entire what we'd call death pile in Vendu drafted, much of it having photographs and skews and measurements just waiting on finals, and honestly, there are pieces in every step of the process. So if you're a batch worker or working with VAs, employees, etc., Vendu is perfect for you. Once we eventually list our inventory, it's no longer drafted, of course, but it's active. And for a quick overview, look how much we can see about an item before we even open it. I can see that this item I got on February 6th, it's listed for 45. I've assigned it one of my custom co colored co coded labels that we'll talk about, and I can see exactly where this item is listed. I can see the quantity of the item and the SKU. Now, when I open it is when I see even more of those details that we were talking about. But just at the overview level, there's so much you can see. And sold items look similar as well. Before we even open a sale, a sold item, I can see that these I acquired on September 8th. I sold them for 24 yesterday on Poshmark. Opening an item will provide us with all of the details that Mark will tell us uh, why are so important for tax preparation and bookkeeping. 
There's also some other features here like searches, sorting, and filtering that really help you to see all of your inventory and have the most organized system. So of course we can so search our inventory, not just by status, draft active sold, but by title or SKU. So I always like to type in pink, for example, and we can see 187 of my listings will yield, narrowing it down significantly if I add the word dress. If you use a SKU system, you can also sort by SKU. As a tip, if you don't use a SKU system, but maybe you use that SKU field to indicate that it's on, you know, rack two, I certainly could do that. For example, with my shoes, those are kind of just in numbered bins. And when I type in bin one, I'm going to see all of the shoes that are in that bin. So inventory management also requires that physical component, but Vendu will help you keep track of that. You can also sort by marketplace, which is a great way to start cross-listing, see what in what isn't listed in various places. And we can also sort by date created newest and oldest, modified newest and oldest, recently listed or stalest, alphabetically both ways, price both ways, etc. We also have some really advanced filters, and these can be particularly helpful for bookkeeping and inventory management. These advanced filters um, really allow you to segment specific pieces of your inventory. Let me know in the chat if you have used Vendu's advanced filters, because this is a relatively new um, development. I'd say maybe four months ago. Um, for example, if I wanted to look at items by a date range of sold, I could then target just items sold, for example, in February or in last quarter or last year. This allows me to segment specific pieces of inventory by specific action items or characterizations. And we have many of these advanced filters. Another really cool thing we have that might not be totally helpful for taxes, although I'm interested to see if Mark has any ideas, um, are our Vendu labels. Um, I know everyone's using Vendu labels. They are a user favorite, and I use them myself as well. Vendu labels are color-coded electronic stickers that you can stick on your inventory for your own organizational purposes. So when you go to your settings and your account preferences, you will see a label manager. Vendu custom labels allow you to tag inventory just for your own organization. So there are so many creative ways that our users use these. For example, I use them for items to track by source. So these are items I got from a wholesale company that I, I'm not sure is a wholesale company anymore, but I had purchased a couple boxes and tagging these items in this way enables me to look at just those in my inventory and even to look at just those in a spreadsheet filtering by that label or to obtain analytics on our analytics screen by just that label. So I'll often use those by source. I use them by lot. For example, I'm still entering some items that I acquired at the end of January. I'm tagging those now to out of cost of goods later based on my prices. Um, I use them for items that require attention for some reason. You'll see that these are tagged and the notes will illustrate why attention is required. So there are countless ways to use these labels. Uh, Mark, what would you, how would you recommend users using labels in a way that might be better? beneficial at tax time or for bookkeeping in general? Yeah, I'd have to think about it, but I mean, it, the, the idea that comes to mind is, is more just based on, has to do with your own personal bookkeeping preferences. So, I mean, there's, there's two main reasons I talk about doing bookkeeping. I mean, one is obviously, so you're not lost at tax time. So you have your numbers. But even more importantly, it's just so you can know what's going on in your own business and have visibility into your own profitability. And for the labels, I mean, I don't, um, well, yeah, the, the thing I'm thinking about for the labels is if you are, I mean, if you want to track profitability by brand or by type, like, I don't, like all the different categories, people, you might want to track something um, just, yeah, just to have that more specific 
detail, which could be helpful. Absolutely. And amongst the most helpful inventory management features and services that we offer at Vendu is the spreadsheet, the export CSV spreadsheet. You'll see here in multi actions, we can do many multi multi bulk actions, right? This is where we delist and relist a favorite. This is where we can add those or remove those custom labels in bulk. This is also where we can export our inventory to a CSV. And this is probably one of the coolest and most underrated features of Vendu. This is your CSV, which is a fancy word for an editable, downloadable spreadsheet that you can open in any compatible software. And what this becomes in effect is your inventory report and or your sales report all in one. So here you can filter your inventory. You could do by date or you could look at all. And you can also customize what you would like to appear on the spreadsheet. So while you can download a spreadsheet that contains literally every piece of information about your items, you could also just target what you're interested in for what you're doing. So for example, in my tax prep this year, what I downloaded was one that had my title, my brand, my SKU, category, price, status, the dates listed and sold, where it sold, any internal notes, because I've noted them as they're important. And all of the numbers are here. Your price sold, your cost of goods, your marketplace fees, your shipping fees, quantities, everything that you need. When we click generate CSV, and with a large inventory, this might take just a moment, what's happening is a, a spreadsheet's being generated in real time. It will reflect that item we just drafted together, those Levi's jeans. And that's what I mean when I say that you can skip the spreadsheet, and that's because Vendu does it for you. Just as you use Vendu, as you fill out the Vendu form, as you mark items as sold, which we'll do together to see how those numbers are ent entered, all of that, I'm just going to cancel the download, especially with Zoom. I have about 9,000 items, including sold in my inventory. So I should have uh, shown you a segment, <laughs> but it's a spreadsheet that could be opened in Excel, in Google Docs, in a tax preparation software, and it has in real time all of those tools. Mark, what do you think of the Vendu spreadsheet? And do you have any tips as to which fields that a seller should definitely include in here to provide their accountant? Yeah, I mean, at a minimum, just for, yeah, like the bare bones, I would just include five things. So the, the purchase date, the sale date, the cost, the selling price, and just the item description. And then... I mean, anything beyond that could still be helpful, but those are what I would consider the minimum. Perfect. So that is an amazing feature we have in Vendu. And one more thing I want to demonstrate before I pass on over to Mark to talk all about reseller taxes is how to mark an item as sold. Because when we mark an item as sold, that is when we enter all of the sale information that's used in that spreadsheet. So for example, I sold this morning a pair of H&M jogger sweatpants, not for very much, but it's what I sold. So we're going to mark this as sold together so you can see how to enter this information and how quick it is to keep those spreadsheets perfect all year round. So I'm going to open this item and they sold on Poshmark. So I'm going to hover over where they sold, click mark as sold. I did not sell them for the 25 I was asking. I'm going to quickly change that to 20. For many marketplaces, including Poshmark, you'll see that those fees are already estimated. Some marketplaces have estimatable uh, are, are accurate, not estimated. On some marketplaces, we can calculate those for you. On others, it depends on how the buyer pays. So you might need to enter that yourself and any shipping costs that you spent. So what happens right now when I click mark as sold is two things. One, Vendu is going to delist this from everywhere else. So it took it off of eBay, Mercari, Depop, and Grailed, which is awesome. But two, the real magic for our, our inventory management and tax purposes are these numbers. Vendu took the sale price 
it subtracted my marketplace fees, subtracted my cost of goods, subtracted shipping expenses to give me that profit number. Now, selling on Poshmark, Poshmark is kind enough to give us this cute little report that says that. But as you know, there aren't cute little reports on all marketplaces. So the how amazing it is that we can get these numbers with 100% accuracy that quickly and the fact that this information is available on the spreadsheet. Plus, you probably already know this information is used for analytics to give you some really powerful business insight about your sales stats, but we could do another workshop on just those and maybe we will. <laughs> so those are some of the main Vendu features that help you to keep your inventory management and bookkeeping in order. If you've been importing and you might not have everything up to date, at any time you can make things up to date by making modifications to add things like cost of goods and dates of acquisition directly to the Vendu form. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Mark to talk about reseller taxes and tips for tax preparation. Yes, I mean, just just a few basics, just a few um, general tips that I think are helpful if, if you're a beginner or even if you've been doing this for a while, they're helpful reminders. And then a few myths that continue to persist. Um, but I mean, yeah, if you've, if you've heard me ever talk about this stuff before, you've probably heard me say one of the first things you should do is to get a separate bank account. Um, and even if it's not a, an official business account, it, at least have a separate personal account that you use just for your business uh, sales and everything going through there. Um, you don't necessarily need a business account if you're a sole proprietor, which is what you are by default, which is what I'm guessing most of us are. Um, so yeah, just have that separate bank account and then link that to all the platforms you're selling on so that the fees and the sales and the payouts go through there. Um, and yeah, that's just going to make your life a lot easier when you when it comes to tax time and you're not having to go through and separate all out all the personal stuff. Because if, if you are combining personal and business, you're you're risking either overstating your income, in which case you're you're paying more tax than you have to, or understating your income, in which case you're, you're gonna be on the IRS's radar. So um yeah, that's, that's the first tip. And then after that, eventually, it's going to be a good idea to layer on some type of bookkeeping system. And I mean, there's no one size fits all. And it, I think for a lot of people, especially in the beginning, if you're using a program like Vendu, that'll be more than sufficient because it has a lot of those... Um, it captures all the platform sale and fee and cost of goods sold information if you put that in there. And that's going to be most of what your activity is. And then you'll just have to figure out a way to layer on any additional um, costs that you incur purchasing supplies or other software subscriptions or stuff like that. Um, and as you grow, maybe you'll want to layer on something more robust like QuickBooks, but that you can continue to use Vendu for that cost of goods sold piece, which is, I mean, it's that honestly, that's my favorite feature just because that's such a huge part of what I help people try and do. They're like, oh, here's all my tax stuff, but I have no idea, do, idea what to do with my inventory. Can you help me figure that out? So I spend a lot of my time talking to people about that. Um, and I'm just blowing through these. I don't know if I'm waiting for, I guess we'll do questions at the end. Um, and then you, it'll be helpful to can, to evaluate your business entity. Like I mentioned sole proprietorship, that's where most of us start just by default. There's nothing you have to do to become a sole proprietorship really, except for just start selling. You just start engaging in some type of business activity for profit. Um, and that's what the IRS considers you to be. Uh, but eventually you might have a reason to kind of take the next step, which would typically be an LLC. And a, a really common question is, you know, why, what are the reasons to become an LLC? And the, 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 there's a few main reasons I talk about. I mean, one of the main benefits of being an LLC is the liability protection that you get. So if, if you have personal assets or 
um, anything like that you want to protect, then an LLC is a good way to go because it gives you that liability protection. Um, another reason people do it is because sometimes they might be working with a bank or a vendor or a wholesaler who requires them to be an LLC in order to work with them. Um, it can kind of elevate your perception of le perceived legitimacy as a business. Um, but then the, the reason I really like an LLC is because it's a stepping stone to an S corp, um, which is a, another type of business entity that, that can really real help you realize some significant tax savings if you're at a certain level. Um, cause you can't skip straight from a sole proprietorship to an LLC. Um, and I'll just, I, I see a question right now that's relevant to this. So, so Elizabeth is saying, how can we, what's the easiest, most cost efficient way to form an LLC? Um, you can use online services like legal zoom. I don't know if it's, I don't know what their price is. I don't know if it's 50 bucks or 150 bucks, but I mean, for the most part, it probably is pretty, probably fine. Like I charge 350 to kind of give you an idea of, of a range. Um, I mean, chances are they'll do it right, but you just want to avoid a situation where they, you know, check the wrong box or do something wrong. And then it just creates a hassle because you got to go back and file more forms to fix it. And, um, but yeah. So I'm going to yeah. read off some questions to you. Sorry, there, cut you off. Yeah, no, go ahead. Um, so if anyone has any questions for Mark, please put those not in the chat, but in the Q&A. Um, it's just easier to follow. They pop up individually. And I'm going to read some of those for you. Um, someone is asking what to do on taxes. This is Anita's question with items that they had themselves sold and did not make a profit on. I missed, I missed the very first part of that. Sorry. <laughs> Personal items that sold for less than what you paid for them. Mm. How does a reseller handle those on taxes? Yeah, so yeah, the IRS doesn't really care about your personal items. So if, if you want, if it's simpler for you, you can just totally disregard those and exclude those. Because if, if you're incurring losses on those, yeah, the IRS doesn't really care. But um, if, I mean, if you have a reselling business and you're selling other stuff, my advice is to basically, you know, contribute all that personal stuff to your business, basically convert it from personal stuff to business inventory, and then you can capture that loss. You can use that loss to offset the gains that you're realizing in your business. And it's only going to help you from a tax um, perspective. So then the next question is, well, what, what do I put as a cost for those personal items? You know, maybe you don't remember what you paid for it. Um, so it's it's not a perfect, it's not an exact science. I mean, for that personal stuff, at the time you contribute it to your business inventory, you'll assign the cost as the lower of the original cost or the market value. And both of those might be a little difficult to determine, but you... I mean, short answer is you'll have to come up with some type of estimate. I have a YouTube video out there about personal items where I go deeper into that, that you should check out if you have a question on that. But um, yeah, short answer is assign a cost and, and lump it in with your business inventory. Thank you. That was a really good question. Um, someone else said they use an exact date for sold, but they just use the month of when an item is purchased. Should they be using an exact date or for tax purposes, does the month purchased suffice? Um, yeah, the month should be fine. And, and honestly, in general, from a tax perspective, the important thing is the year. Perfect. Someone asked if you could repeat those five main things that you said are super important on a spreadsheet for bookkeeping. Yes, I mean, I, I have a, a spreadsheet for download out there that's just super simple. It's bare bones. Um, it's like the, the minimum of what you would need. And it has those five things. It's just the item description, the purchase date, the purchase price, and the sale date, and the sale price. Perfect. <laughs> Mark, can Vendu monthly subscription fees be deducted on taxes? Does someone need to itemize deductions? 
Um, so first question, yeah, absolutely. If like any subscription or software that you purchase specifically as a business tool or to help you in your business is going to be deductible. So venue is 100% deductible on your taxes. And um, the itemized thing, that's separate from the business. That itemized deduction has to do with the the personal side of your tax return. Um, so yeah, I'll just, I'll just say that's totally separate. And all of your business activity as a sole proprietor goes on what's called a Schedule C. And that's just where you list your total income, but then you also list all the fees, the, the platform fees, you know, the venue subscription, your cost of goods sold, all that stuff. And then what's left over, the profit, that's what's the tax is calculated on. These are, this is so valuable. I can't wait to watch this and learn even more. Okay. So I have three questions that are all along very similar lines. If someone purchased items last year in 2022 and they don't sell until this year, 2023, is the cost of goods zero or how do they handle it? Yeah. Um, so the, the historically required way to deduct your inventory is to, to only deduct it when you sell it which is, is why we keep talking about cost of goods sold and why it's so helpful to be able to track it because you don't, you don't know the cost of what's sold unless you're tracking those costs somehow. Um, so, and again, that's the historically required way to do it. There is now the option to do what's to use what's called, or use what I call the cash method for inventory where you just deduct your inventory purchases immediately. Um, that's a simpler way to do it. It doesn't give you as valuable of insights into your books, from my in my opinion, because it doesn't match the deductions to the sales that they belong to. Um, but but yeah, so so there's some flexibility what you do there, and I, I've I've got some videos on that and stuff. But um, so yeah. There's some options. Everyone make sure that you follow Mark. Uh, could you share your YouTube? I'll have you share it at the end as well. But I know there's a lot of value there. And where can we find you on YouTube, Mark? Um, yeah, it's just not your dad's CPA on YouTube or yeah, that's on Instagram. Perfect. Is there a minimum threshold of earnings before you have to file taxes? Good question. Common question. <laughs> Yeah, um, not for for self employment, not really. Yeah, I guess technically, if you're, yeah, I mean the the easy answer is no. There we go. No. Yeah. So what you're saying is, if anyone resells anything for a profit, they should be filing. Yep, almost always. Even even if you don't get a 1099, which is one of the things I was going to talk about a little later. Awesome. We'll take a couple more and then we'll go into those tax myths. Um, Stacy asked, should you have a CPA or can you just use a tax preparer? So I think CPA um, versus, um, you know, like H&R Block, what do you recommend? Yeah, I mean, you, you can do either as long as it's someone who's, you know, reputable. Yeah, I mean, there. Yeah, it's it, it is. It's a tough position to be in because there's a lot of good help and a lot of bad help out there. But they don't. They don't necessarily have to be a CPA. Um, they could be just a general tax preparer. They could be an, an enrolled agent, which is an IRS designation, an IRS certification. Um, so yeah. Someone asked, and I know this is a very specific question to each person, but someone asked how much they should withhold for federal income tax. Yeah, that's a good question. So as a, a reseller, you're you're probably self-employed. And when you're self-employed, for, for a lot of us, for a lot of us, it's the first type of self-employment we've had. And you'll be subject to self-employment taxes. So not only do you have the regular income tax, which you're probably used to seeing on a W-2, but you also have self-employment tax, which takes the place of social security taxes that um, or payroll taxes, the social security and Medicare piece. But, but that self-employment tax is basically 15% of your profit. 
So you're going to be paying 15% on top of whatever your income tax rate is, which is probably somewhere between 10 and another 15%. So you add those together and you're anywhere between 20 and 30% that you should plan on setting aside for federal, federal tax, Very. unfortunately. That is, it hurts, right? It hurts. <laughs> Two more before tax myths. This question was asked, I think, nine times. I was just scrolling through. It's amazing questions from everyone, by the way. What does a reseller do with inventory that was free? So donated to them, given to them. Someone said sent to them by a company to sell. In any instance, the inventory was free. How do you account for cost of goods? Um, yeah, if like, if they know you sell stuff and they're just like, here, take a bunch of inventory. I, I think typically it's just going to be a cost of goods of zero. Makes sense. Easy yeah. enough. Cost nothing. Right. <laughs> and last one before some tax myths. Uh, this was asked by a few people as well. Should we keep every single receipt for everything or do bank statements showing purchases suffice? That's a good question. So the, the, the IRS wants you to have some type of substantiation that supports every single transaction. Um, and the most common type of substantiation, or maybe the easiest, the most readily available would be a receipt. So that's why people talk about receipts so much. But, but the receipt is not necessarily required. I mean, it, it could be... Um, you know, a, a photo, it could be some type of like, could be a, a, an invoice or a canceled check, just like some type of evidence, tangible evidence that supports that transaction. A, a bank statement or a credit card statement is, is also a type of substantiation. It's, it's maybe not as strong as a receipt because it doesn't have as much detail, but I, I still think it's, it's something, um, and you also have to like look at the risk factor, like what's the actual risk and likelihood that anyone, IRS or whoever, ever drills down to that level of detail, which I think is almost impossible that that's ever going to happen. So in other words, don't freak out if you don't have all your receipts, you know, but, but yeah, but yeah, don't freak out if you don't have them, but at the same time, you're supposed to. Um, and, but, and you don't have to keep the physical copies. You can just take, I recommend just using a scanning app or something and then storing them in a digital folder somewhere and forgetting about them. I like that. A digital folder. It's a scanning app. Either take a picture or just scan them in, you know, Adobe scan. That's, that's a really good tip. I don't know why I've never thought of that because I've got some envelopes full of receipts that I just jam in there. Hope I'll never have to go through. I hope I'll never be on it if I did. It'd be a mess. <laughs> All right, let's talk about, you can keep questions coming in the Q&A. We're going to take a few more at the end. Um, I will say that these are amazing questions. We got some that were super duper specific, you know, like my spouse does this, I do this, we live in this state. I'm going to defer those questions, um, but at the end, Mark will share all the different ways to contact him. Um, it is my understanding that he is taking clients. He is a CPA. Um, so we would love to help you make that connection with him. I'm um, taking the questions that are general or, and, you know, applicable to almost everyone. Uh, so Mark, could you tell us some of your most frequently heard tax myths or misconceptions? Um, and just tell us a little about why they're wrong. <laughs> um, yeah. So one is that, I mean, so many resellers now, and in just a lot of small business in general, we work from home and there's still a, a persistent idea that if that you don't, that people don't want to take the home office deduction because they've heard it, that it's an audit trigger, but it's, um, I don't know if that was ever true. And if it ever were, I mean, it was over 30, 35 years ago when it was just so uncommon, but now it's, it's just so I mean, you're almost abnormal if you don't work from home and you don't take the home office deduction. So, so really, you just have to make sure that you qualify for it. And if you do, then you should absolutely take it. You just have to, you have to, you have to have a space, not even necessarily an entire room, just a space that you use regularly, regularly and exclusively for the business. And if you meet those two requirements, then you qualify for the home office deduction and you can 
And especially for the people, I mean, some people use their entire basement or their entire garage, and it can be up to 30, 40, 50% of their entire home. And then you can deduct that percentage of your, your rent or mortgage interest, property taxes, uh, rent or homeowner's insurance, some depreciation. So it, it can be significant. So I would not forego that deduction just because you're nervous about it. So that's that one. Um, another one people ask is they say, well, I don't, I don't want to sell more because then, you know, I'll jump from the 12% the tax bracket to the 22% tax bracket. And I don't want to pay 22% on all my income. Um, so, so that's the myth that you, that you'll be taxed at that higher rate on all your income. We have, um, so the income tax rates is called a marginal income tax rate system. So the, like the first, I don't remember the numbers, let's say the first, I should have pulled them up. The first chunk, the first 50,000, let's say is taxed at 10%. And then the next tax chunk is taxed at 12%. And then the next chunk as you go higher is taxed at 22%. And so, so the higher you go, you are taxed at higher rates, but not, but all of your income is not going into that higher rate, if that makes sense. So in, in other words, don't, don't sell less or don't pull back, even if you don't want to, just because you're afraid of paying more. Like you're at the end of the day, you're going to have more money, more money in your pocket. So, That's and then probably the, the biggest one um, for a lot of resellers is the question of if, if I don't receive a 1099 from Poshmark or from eBay or from whoever, that means I don't have to pay tax, right? Uh, but that is not the case. So you, as we talked about before, you owe or sh you should report your income whether or not you get a 1099 from your platform. The, the 1099 is just, um, so the, the platforms are required to send you a 1099 and also to report that information to the IRS if you if your sales exceed twenty thousand dollars, or you have and you have over two hundred transactions, um, and I mean that's just a way for the IRS to make sure that they're that you're paying your taxes. But and they and a lot of people probably heard for they were going to reduce that threshold to just six hundred dollars for last year, but everybody was freaking out about it at the end, and they they ended up po postponing it until 2023. But regardless, whether or not you get that, you still have to report the income. I personally really liked getting one. I verified all of my numbers that I right. had and that do were correct. I mean, I'm not trying to be evasive in taxes. Um, so I always just want to normalize being happy about bookkeeping and a 1099K. It means you made a, a great amount of sales. Congratulations. It'll allow you to look at that against your Vendu or whatever you're using. Uh, it's a really good thing. So let's normalize being happy about having organized businesses. <laughs> Sorry to interject there. I had to share. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, and then the, the last one I just wanted to mention is the idea that you, if, if your selling is just a hobby that you don't owe tax. So uh, unfortunately, again, the IRS doesn't see that way. Even if, even if you just sell stuff occasionally, or, you know, I don't know if, if it's a hobby and there are different things to help you determine whether or not it's a hobby, you're, your income is still taxable. Um, and the downside with a hobby is that if you are paying for, let's say, Vendu and office supplies, so none of that stuff is deductible. So that's the interesting thing is hobby income is taxable, but hobby expenses are not deductible. So then the obvious answer, well, is just treat yourself as a business. Stop saying you're a hobby and be in it for... I mean, do it for a profit and then you're a business and then you can deduct all of your expenses um, and uh, yeah, it's typically the better way to go. I, it's so interesting. I didn't realize that about hobby, just the income, but not the expenses. Hmm. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much to everyone with these questions. I'm going to give a few more in our last 10 minutes here to Mark. 
Um, so someone asked, and this is a this is a really good one for all of us. What about inventory you've purchased, but then you need to redonate, right? Like losses, there was flaws, whatever you're donating. How do you claim or handle that for tax preparation? Yeah, so any items that you, whether you donate them or destroy them or throw them away, they'll all be deducted as part of cost of goods sold. So it's it's as if you sold it for zero dollars. Perfect. Someone said, is it best to form an LLC before hiring employees? Um, that's a, yeah. you don't have to, so you can have employees as a sole proprietorship. Um, but I suppose when you have employees, you do have more risk. So maybe it'd probably be a good idea if, if we're talking about W2 employees, but if you're just talking about contractors, then I would say you're, you're probably still fine as a sole proprietorship. It, that one just depends. It's more of a, might be on, more on the like legal side. We have a ton of questions here about miles and mileage, like so many questions. Mm -hmm. So in lieu of the reading each of them, could you tell us a little bit about business miles and mileage at tax time, please? Yeah, so, so that's another one that is um, important to track. So you can, you can deduct either your business mileage or your actual auto expenses, but not both. So you'll want to choose the one that you think will be more beneficial for you over the long term and stick with it. Um, but yeah, I think for, for 2023, I think it's 64 and a half cents per mile is deductible. So, I mean, there's a lot of people taking, you know, frequent out of state sourcing trips. So, you know, a lot of my clients will have several thousand miles. So if you have 10,000 miles, that's, a $6,000 deduction right there. So you want to make sure that you are um, tracking your, your business mileage. And for that, I would just, there's, there's some good um, mileage tracking apps out there, which is probably the, the simplest way to go. Someone asked if you didn't track your miles, if you can estimate them based on the receipts you have from various thrift stores and like kind of adding those miles retroactively, is that uh, allowed? <laughs> It's, um, I mean, it's not, I mean, yeah, I, I tell my clients to do that. Like if you, if you didn't track it, if you don't have it, then yeah, go back and estimate it and recreate it. I don't know if the IRS loves that, but, um, worse. I mean, yeah, I, I think that's better than doing nothing. Sure. Someone asked here, and I'm going to take this one. What if the platform 1099K does not match the vendue spreadsheet data? It usually won't. The 1099Ks include so many things, canceled sales, so in some instances, tax paid by buyer, in some instances, um, shipping paid by buyer that was just for shipping you didn't profit on. It's not going to match. Um, and I suggest providing both to your accountant. They're going to require, um, well, actually, I should stop there. I suggest providing them both to your accountant. And Mark, if you were my accountant and I gave you both, you can pick up from there. <laughs> Wait for, for 1099 stuff? Yeah. So someone said my Vendue sales mm, data, right, right, right. which it's not going to. So you as an accountant, um, why do you need both? What do you do? <laughs> yeah. And that highlights also the importance of having your own bookkeeping system, because I like relying on, on, on the book, on the books, like on my numbers or on your numbers more than I do on what, what's on a 1099. Because, um, yeah, like a, like a lot of 1099s will, and some platforms do, some platforms don't, but some some include sales tax. So if, if, if they collected $10,000 worth of sales tax for you, that's going to inflate that number and you're not supposed to be taxed on that. So if, if you have your own books and you send me those and you also send me the 1099, I'm going to um, prepare the tax return so that the IRS sees that 1099 number that they're expecting but I'll also make sure to deduct out the piece that shouldn't be there so that your the rest of your tax return matches what's on your books. So yeah, it is, uh, that is a good thing to be aware of. These questions are phenomenal. <laughs> I love that. 
Um, someone said if the receipts are lost for items that they owned originally that they're selling, can they estimate original retail value or original purchase price? Wait, say that first part again. So if they don't have receipts for items they're selling that are theirs, so we'll say they had some items from five years ago, they now just sold them. Can they estimate their cost of goods based on what they think their original purchase price was around? Um, yeah, it's it's not ideal, but I think it's better to do that than do nothing. Because, yeah, I mean, if if the worst case, if the IRS ever audited you and somehow drilled down to that level of detail and said, hey, give me a receipt for this thing. And you're like, well, I don't have it. They would say, well, OK, well, we're just going to disallow that deduction you took for it. But I wouldn't let that stop you from um, making a, a good estimate. We've received quite a few questions, Mark, about consignment selling. So I'm a reseller. And for that reason, my local community knows I do this. I take their items with the understanding. I know you know what consignment is, but in case anyone's really new, I'm selling items for other people in exchange for some kind of commission. So a very standard example would be 50-50. I take some handbags from my neighbor. I'm going to sell them. We're going to split that profit 50-50. Obviously, this uh, the whole profit that I didn't make will be reflected in several places. How do you recommend that someone keep that type of information organized? Yeah, um, I don't have a specific ant solution for that, but I do think just kind of keeping separate the consigned inventory from your own inventory, whether that's two different tabs on a spreadsheet or or labels in Vendu, right? Um, yeah, just a way where you can separate those two and yeah, I don't know if that's what they were looking for. That's all I got for that one. That's exactly what I do in Vendu as the labels. I can then look at those labels on my spreadsheet and deduct accordingly. Um, cause it will be of course reflected in 1099 case. Mm -hmm. Um, someone said sales tax. How do I show I paid on purchase? Do I have to pay again on sold? Oh yeah, that's a good question. Um, so the sales tax that you pay when you purchase inventory, it just becomes part of the overall cost of cost of goods that you deduct. Um, I mean, ideally as a reseller, you don't have to pay sales tax on your inventory. Uh, but it, it depends on where you're purchasing from. Like if you have a reseller certificate and you're purchasing from a wholesaler or something, they don't have to charge you sales tax. Uh, but if, you, if you're buying from somewhere where they do charge you sales tax, you can deduct that as part of cost of goods sold. Some states have programs where you can uh, recover that sales tax that you weren't supposed to pay because you're a reseller. Um, and then... The sales tax that's collected when when you sell it, um, for, for most of us, we don't have to worry about that now because the platforms take care of that for us. So we just have to make sure that we're, we're not being taxed on it when we do our own income taxes. I kind of covered like three different things there. So I hope that'll make sense. It, it was amazing. Very, very helpful. And then we're going to take two last questions. One's a Vendu and one's a taxes. So Stephanie asked a Vendu question. When an item sells on eBay, how do I enter shipping costs? She makes a few dollars on shipping, she said. Where should she enter that profit? So there is a, many ways to do this, Stephanie, and you can really do it however you'd like. It's just important to understand the formula. So Vendu is taking sale price, subtracting marketplace fees, subtracting cost of goods, subtracting shipping costs, right? So if you understand that, you can always manipulate these numbers to make that final value accurate. On the eBay example, if my buyer pays 30 for the item and another 10 to ship, I'm going to put that my buyer paid 40. If it only costs me $7 to ship, I'm going to put in shipping $7. That $3 extra that I made on shipping would be appropriately accounted for uh, because it's the first number that we're actually subtracting everything else from, the sale price. 
I hope that makes sense. Um, like Mark, we have Vendu tutorials on our YouTube and Help Center as well uh, that'll help you to better understand those specifics, those features. Um, and the last question for Mark is, uh, oh, I lost it here. Here we go. Should I deduct money that I pay my teenager when she helps me? So we won't say it's just someone's child because I know we, that's an area there. But if someone's paying someone in a way that might not be entirely official, how can they handle that, if at all? Yeah, so, so two things there. If if you're paying someone, I mean, they're, they're just, a, they're a contractor by default. There's not a lot of paperwork you necessarily need for that. Um, I mean, ideally, you have them fill out a W-9, which is basically just their contact info that you keep on file and you use to give them a 1099, different from the ones we've been talking about, so if you pay them over $600 during the year, technically you're supposed to give them a 1099 and file that. Um, but if it's your, if it's your child specifically, um, so your kids under 18, I think are not subject to like, if they're, if you consider them to be your employee, they're not subject to payroll taxes. So that's self-employment tax. They don't pay that. And if you pay them less than around $13,000, they're not subject to income taxes either, which basically means they don't have to file their taxes or report any of that income. So that's, that's a great way to, I mean, that's a great tax strategy. Like if you want to make your kids buy their own clothes or, you know, buy their own car insurance or whatever, you can pay them through the business and get a deduction for it. And they don't have to pay um, tax on it. I love that. That's really valuable. I can't wait until my eight-year-old is a teeny bit older because I'm putting that boy to work. <laughs> So I just want to say thank you to everyone for all of these questions. Um, of course, we couldn't get to each and every one. I tried to pick the ones that were the most commonly asked. We will be posting a replay of this in the Facebook group. Um, that will be there as soon as it's available. So if you're not in our Facebook group, you can find us at Ben Do, a seller's best friend. I'm also going to put um, a link in the chat right now to our reseller's tax guide. So this is a reseller's tax prep that has a lot of the information we covered here today. Um, this was written by Mark um, collaboratively with Vendu. It has myths, it has tips, it has a breakdown on each and every marketplace and how they all handle taxes. So I'm putting that in the chat right now. I'm actually going to type it like several times in a row so it doesn't get lost here so you cannot miss it. That's a free tax guide. It's one of the best resources I've ever seen. If you have any Vendu specific questions, you know where to find us. Um, you know, the pink button is always available for you. I did uh, defer a lot of those so we could take uh, get the most out of our time here with Mark. And with that, I want to thank you so much, Mark. It's such a pleasure. I've learned so much today and from your guide. Um, and we thank you so much for joining and taking the time during this very busy season <laughs> to answer all these questions. Please remind us where we can find you and how we can connect with you. Um, yeah, thanks. It was fun. So just my website, notyourdadcpa.com or notyourdadcpa on YouTube or Instagram. Um, yeah, that's it. Not your dad CPA. Well, thank you again, everyone. Thank you, Mark. Thank you for Team Bendu for making this happen. Thank you to everyone for joining. You'll see this replay on our Facebook group, likely on our YouTube as well, but come to Facebook first because that's where everything goes first. Uh, and stay tuned because we host these product workshops and webinars all the time about Bendu, about reselling um, with product industry experts like this. Um, and Bendu truly is here reseller's best friend. So thanks again. Thanks, Mark. Bye, everyone.